for yin, this yin practice, stretching and releasing held energy and finding that wonderful release as we practice today. Um, I felt guided to this book this morning again, Loving Kindness by Sharon Salzberg. And um, I just opened to this page. Um, so I want to share her, um, her guidance here this morning. But first, let's come into a mm, aligned place as we sit this morning, taking a few moments to ground into the sits bones and the legs. slowing everything down and coming into the present moment as perhaps you close your eyes and withdraw to inside your own your own body and inside your experience of yourself in this more intimate way Coming to the breath, notice the inhale and the exhale, and with awareness you can begin to slow it down. Deep breaths in and long breaths out welcoming the parasympathetic nervous system to be dominant here. As we breathe and ground into the sits bones, feeling that rooted sense of stability and landing. As you breathe in and out, begin to lengthen your spine and soften your shoulders away from your ears and the shoulder blades on the back towards the uh, hips. Lengthening the neck, softening the jaw, relaxing the face the arms, the hands. Truly arriving here on your mat as you breathe in and out. And looking within into that spacious quality of that which exists within your own being. Perhaps there's an intention to guide you through your practice. Just taking a moment to notice if there is that. And once connected with that sense, oh, there's more of you. How wonderful. Um, I will just read from this book. Stay with your inner being, please. So these are, this is loving kindness for the greater good. Loving kindness towards all beings, which includes each one of us. 
May all beings be free from danger. May they have mental happiness. May they have physical happiness. May they have ease of well-being. May all living beings be free from danger. May they have mental happiness. May they have physical happiness. May they have ease of well-being. May all living beings be free from danger. Please include yourself. May they have mental happiness. May they have physical happiness. May they have ease of well-being. May all living beings be free from danger. May they have mental happiness. May they have physical happiness. May they have ease of well-being. May all living beings be free from danger. May they have mental happiness. May they have physical happiness. May they have ease of well-being. Just taking a few more moments to let those concepts, those qualities permeate. And please bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra. Let's join together in chanting one Aum, Aum, that wonderful primordial sound that also stimulates the nerves in the lips and sends messages into the nervous system to activate the parasympathetic. Amazing what the yogis, ancient yogis knew. Taking a couple of cleansing breaths first, take a deep breath in and let that breath go. And another one like that. And let that one go. And now inhale and begin. And then please release your hands. Let them fall to your legs or your lap. And open your eyes, lift your eyelids. Take it easefully. Arrive 
in the visionary world, in the world of vision, once again. Beautiful flowers for those of you who weren't immediately here. <laughs> so lovely. Whoever did that has, well, all of you. The message is from all of you, and whether you knew it or not, thank you. It's so lovely. <clears throat> Please come to your mat and take wide kneed child's pose. Bring your big toes together, draw your sits bones towards your heels, use whatever props, support your practice always. Maybe you'd like to pad your knees with a blanket. We'll be here for a little longer than in a hatha practice because this is yin. So, once you arrive with your knees spread wide, lengthen your spine and come down towards the mat. As always, use a block or a blanket under your forehead if that is best in your practice. And for this practice this morning, you can rest your forearms on the mat. As you arrive, begin to notice the sensations that arise in your body. And breathe right into those, sending breath, prana, oxygen, life force energy through the breath. Right to those areas of sensation. And as you are here in this forward fold, let your face relax completely. There's a sensation when relaxing the face as though it's falling off. Just let that be. Relaxing the lips, the cheeks, the ears. Then bringing awareness to the back body. Notice the sensations around the back of the pelvis, around the sacrum, that flat bone triangular shape flat bone across the back of your pelvis where so much ligamentation lives. Send breath right there to the space of the sacrum. And then notice the space at the bottom of the ribs where your kidneys live. And send breath right there. And then notice the space right behind your heart and send your breath right there right behind the heart with deep breaths in and long breaths out Now notice the space of the groins, the inner thighs. As you remain here, perhaps you notice the warming of the fascia allows for a deepening into the pose.
And if it feels good in your body, perhaps walking the fingertips a little longer and activating the muscles in the arms. Hugging those muscles right into the bones, firming the arms. And drawing the shoulder blades now a little farther down towards the hips as you press your fingertips into the mat. Deep breaths in, deeper breaths out. And then adding on, you can rest your elbows on the mat and bring your hands behind your head in Anjali Mudra. Fingertips towards the sky. Still breathing in and breathing out, slow and steady. Longer inhalations and longer exhalations. Noticing where you might be holding tension and letting that go best you can. And we'll be here in this wide knee child's pose for about five more breaths. Good. Breathing into the sensations as they arise. Slowly lower your hands to the mat and then bring your hands under your shoulders, spreading the fingers wide, press up. Take care as you move out of the pose, lifting the knees. Please don't drag them. Take care of the inner groins. And then come to table pose, please. And we'll take some upward and downward cat just to Warm the spine up. Make, your, uh, make sure your hips are over your knees and your shoulders are over your wrists. Fingers spread wide. On an inhalation, arch the back body, lifting long through the crown of your head. Toes turned under, tailbone towards the sky. And as you exhale, slowly press the tops of the feet into the mat, draw the tailbone down, press the earth away with your hands and arch up through the back body. On your next inhalation, once again, upward cat, heart and belly sink down, tailbone lifts up, extend long through the crown of your head as you draw the shoulder blades towards your hips opening through the heart, exhale, other way. Draw your back body up, draw the belly towards the spine, take it slow, inhale, upward cat, long neck, open through the collarbones, exhale, down cat. Arching up, draw the belly in deeply, other way. And 
one more cycle. Extending long through the crown of the head, drawing the shoulder blades down towards the hips, pressing the earth away as you draw the belly in. And then coming back to table, maybe wagging your tail, finding ease through the body. Wonderful. Now please get your blocks, place them right at the front of the mat, and a blanket for your knees. We'll practice some dragons this morning. So the knees will like being on a blanket. And you'll come to your knees with the blocks under your hands. And once you've arrived there, please step your right foot forward. Take your blocks with you. Once you've arrived here, turn your, your back toes under and lift your back leg. Press out in a lunge. Make sure you're on railroad tracks. Lengthen through the back heel, waking up the inner thigh, the groin. Take a couple of breaths here. And then you can lower your knee to the mat and lengthen the toes behind the knee. You can stay right here in Dragon Flying High. And you can stay here. There's options. We'll arrive with those in a little bit. Begin to breathe into the stretch. lowering the shoulder, the points of the shoulder blades towards the hips, so make sure not to prop up in the shoulders, but draw your neck up, widen through the collarbones, muscle energy to support the joints and bones. Make sure your front knee isn't beyond your ankle, and if it is, just step your foot up a little bit caring for the knee. Breathing here. Lengthening through the crown of the head. Notice everything that's going on in your body. Start at the crown of your head and scan all the way down. Notice your shoulders your neck, your shoulder blades. Perhaps from here, you lower your blocks. Maybe, maybe not. Whatever feels appropriate, listen to that. You can stay right here or bring a block, your right block inside the right foot. And there are options here. There's lots of options. So from here, perhaps, you choose to lower down. Maybe, maybe not. It's just an option. It's not a necessity. Best to keep the spine long. If you notice that you're hunching, maybe come back up. Option to rotate the leg out, to the right leg out to the side, resting, the out, resting on the outside of the foot, the knee coming outside, moving out rather than up, moving out. So, so you can see like so. So one option is here. You can open. 
depending upon your body and what feels good for you. You can bring your hands to the mat. That's another option. So just experiment and take great care, knowing that there's no requirements or rules. Best to keep muscle energy in the legs and not completely hang in the joints, but hug the muscles to the bones, especially if you know that you tend to hyperextend through your joints. So for, for some, the practice of yin is a practice of opening into deeper stretch, deeper mobility in the joints. And for some who are more hypermobile, the practice of yin is a practice of uh, supporting the joints with muscle energy. Not hanging, but hugging in more. And that's dependent upon your body. And you can always bring your black blocks to frame your front leg and stay here in dragon flying high. And we'll be here for about three more breaths. So if you are in a low flying dragon, which is like this more, begin to press up, lengthening the spine and coming back to dragon flying high. Taking a few more breaths right here. Draw the belly in, support the spine, breathe into the sensations, and to come out of the pose, begin to lift the hips, sending them back, and draw your right leg back, back to table pose, and reverse windshield wiper sending hips from side to side. Slow, nice and slow. Coordinate with your breath. And then come back to center Find your blocks and bring your left foot forward. Knee right over the ankle or ankle foot. And then turn the back toes under, lift up. Press out through the back heel, Hugging the muscles to the bones and lengthening the spine. Once again, notice your shoulders. If you're hanging in the shoulders, lift up out of the shoulders. Again, muscle energy. Taking a couple more breaths here. Noticing the knee over the ankle, maybe walking the foot forward just a bit. Good. Inhale. Exhale, lower the knee to the mat, and then lengthen the toes. And dragon flying high. We'll take a series of breaths right here. Noticing sensation through the groin, perhaps the inner thigh. Wherever it arises in your body, breathe into that. Notice your shoulders, your neck, your jaw. Lengthen the neck. Lengthen 
long, slow, deep breaths. And as the fascia releases, as it warms and releases, the sensations might just grow a little bit, deepening into the pose, pressing into all four corners of the front foot. Maybe you bring your left block in. Maybe you lower the blocks a little bit. Experiment. See what feels good and don't go beyond that. Sensations, yes. Sharp pains, no. Coming into dragon flying low, perhaps you rock the foot out. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you send your knee out to the side of the mat. Maybe not. Remember, it's all a practice. Stay with the breath. Breathing into sensations. Staying as long as possible through the back body. Beautiful. Enjoy the breath. Feel those releases as the fascia warms and lets go. And just because you've come into perhaps this lower um, option here, perhaps you come out of it a bit, lifting up. Remembering that it's your practice. And breathe. Breathe into the stretch. Breathe into the spaciousness and maybe this is the perfect time to reflect on your intention for your practice. Nice, long, deep breaths in and longer breaths out. And let's begin to orient towards Coming close to coming out of the pose will bring the both blocks to frame the front foot. And draw the belly in and lengthen the spine. Press into all four corners of your front foot and then begin to send your hips back. And you can either bring your hands to the mat or use your blocks whatever works best in your body. And once again, send your hips from side to side. Reverse windshield wipers. Do your best to breathe with the motions. Taking it slow. Being loving and kind to your body. And come back to center. Bring your toes together, keeping your knees hip width distance apart. Sink back with a long spine, drawing the inner groins back and in. Slowly, nice and slow, lower down into child's pose. And you know you can use a block. Place a block if that feels good under your forehead. Your blanket might be right there. You can lower down and bring your head to your blanket. 
maybe even roll it for a little more support if that feels beneficial for your practice. And do keep your arm bones active, hugging the muscles to the bones in your arms, pressing into the fingertips and the palms of the hands, the, the pads behind your fingers. And again, drawing awareness to the tips of the uh, shoulder blades, drawing them down towards your hips. And please practice a three-part breath in the back body, sending the breath first into the area of the sacrum, then into the space of the kidneys, and then to the top of the ribs, all in one deep, long breath in. And then slowly let it go. This time, taking a deep breath into the back body, same way, three-part breath. When you exhale, exhale through pursed lips as though you're blowing through a straw. Take another one like that. Deep breath in, three parts. And blow out through a straw. Coming back to your breath, long and slow, deep breaths in, long breaths out. Active arms, active fingertips. Breathe into the sensations as they arise. And we'll be here for three to five more breaths. Please take a moment to breathe into your ribs, circumferentially filling the ribs in all 360 degrees. And then please bring your hands under your shoulders and slowly press up. And we'll take our blankets and starting with this fold, this orientation, just fold it once so that you can place your hips on the blanket for Sphinx pose. You want to support the lower back in this pose that will hold for a couple of minutes by placing the blanket under the hips. And then you can lower down. Once you've arrived, bring your forearms to the mat, fingertips spread away from you elbows under your shoulders. Press the tops of your toes and the tops of your feet into the mat, please. Send the tailbone towards your heels. So the legs are active, the feet are active, the hips are active. Zip up from the pubic bone to the navel sending the shoulder blades down the back body towards the hips, 
Press your fingertips into the mat. Lengthen through the sternum. If you press your fingertips into the mat and then press them towards you, you'll feel an opening through the front body, an opening through the collarbones, an opening through the heart, and then drawing energy from the inner elbow to the inner, arp inner armpit, and then from the outer armpit down to the outer el elbow, co-contracting the muscles of the arms. So very active. Softening the jaw, draw the ears back towards the wall behind you, lifting through the crown of the head. And as you breathe here, you can scan from the toe tips all the way up. Notice your hips, notice your pubic bone, belly button, shoulder blades, breathing here. Deep breaths in and longer breaths out, opening the heart, the ribs. Feel the expansion through the ribs, all those little tiny intercostal muscles releasing and stretching. Mm, deep breaths. Slow and long. Soft jaw. Good, everyone. Beautiful. Take a few breaths here. And staying firm th from the toe tips all the way up, up through the hips, through the navel center and the heart. You can, as an option, bring your hands to the corners of your mat, turning your fingertips out at a 45 degree angle, come up into, if it feels good in your body, seal, seal pose, with an external rotation at the head of the arm bones, the shoulder blades draw towards one another on the back body opening through the collarbones with long neck. Keep zipping up from the pubic bone to the belly button, sending the hips towards the heels, the sits bones, the tailbone towards the heels. And if this doesn't feel good in your lower back, lower down and stay with Sphinx. There's no need to create strain in the lower back. As a matter of fact, please do not do that. Be loving and kind even as you hug the muscles to the bones in your legs, active feet pressing into the mat or the floor, however it is in your practice. And just know you can always come in and out of Sphinx and seal. There's no rule that says you have to stay in one or the other. You can come in and out or stay with whichever feels best in your body. In this heart opening um, posture. And know too that practice and there's changes that occur in the body over time as we practice. Wonderful changes. Do stay active, hugging the muscles to the bones.
Drawing the pubic bone towards the navel center, very important part of the of this pose. Both sphinx and seal taking pressure out of the lumbar spine. And we'll be here for about five more breaths. Do your best to keep the neck long. Don't want to crunch through the back of the neck. Stay long through the back of the neck. And then if you're in seal, we'll come back to Sphinx. Take a few final breaths here. You can claw those fingertips in and pull the heart forward. If that feels good in your practice. And then please take a deep breath in with me and one another. And as you exhale, let your hands become a pillow for your forehead and lower down. Take a couple of breaths right here where you are. And then gently send your hips from side to side with your breath. Just encouraging those ligaments along the back of your sacrum to come to neutral, to find ease. Before we take our next pose. And for our next pose, we'll take winged bird. So let's all extend the right arm out to the right side. And then bring your left hand under your left shoulder, turning your face towards the left side of your mat. Once you arrive there, press the left hand into the mat and begin to roll onto your right side, your right hip, right ribs. See where you, where you end up here or where you go. And if it feels good in your practice, you can take your top leg behind you, perhaps resting it on the rug, floor, wherever you are, behind you, maybe. Otherwise, just find what feels comfortable as you begin to stretch through the pectorals along the right front body. Take it nice and slow. Breathing deeply, deep breaths in, long breaths out. That looks good. Mm -hmm. Breathe and release. And in this pose, soften your face, your jaw. Draw your upper shoulder blade towards the back body. No need to let the shoulder drop forward. Keep, keep the shoulder in alignment, the shoulder blade hugging into the back body. Breathe into the sensations as they arise.
Enjoying your breath, enjoying the stretch. breaths in and longer breaths out. We'll be here for about three or four more breath cycles. And to come out of the pose, Gently begin to roll back toward your belly, taking it slow and easy. Remember that fascia appreciates slow, especially in these deep held, deep poses held for longer periods of time. And then you can begin to orient towards the other side taking your left arm out to the side. Bring your right hand under your right shoulder and press back. And if it feels different on this side, no worries. Maybe you bring that foot back behind you. Maybe not. Do your best to stay lined up on your mat, all the way from your toe tips to the tip of your head. Stay with your breath. And you can notice any differences, but no need to compare or criticize or expect. Just allowing and accepting what is in this moment. In your practice and in life, Staying with the breath, perhaps opening more deeply into the pose. <coughs> Pardon me. And once again, touching in with that intention for your practice. Noticing that guidance from your heart. And may all living beings enjoy ease of living. That includes you and me. And all beings. Deep breaths in and longer breaths out.
softening the face, the muscles of the face, the jaw, drawing your right shoulder blade onto the back body. And we'll stay here for three or four more breath cycles. And please, wherever you are in your version of this pose, begin to softly and gently ease yourself back towards your belly, nice and slow. And then bringing your hands under your forehead, rest your head, rest your forehead on your hands. And if it feels good in your body, you can send your hips gently from side to side once again. And again, slowly bringing your hands under your shoulders, press up and draw your hips back, walking your knees forward up to sit for a moment and we'll use our blankets again as we orient towards a seated pose, butterfly. And you might want to bring your blocks with you. Once you come to a seat on your mat, find your six bones. Bring your soles of your feet together and maybe, maybe you use your blocks here under your knees. So Vata Konasana in Hatha Yoga and um, Butterfly in Yin. And finding those sits bones, that forward anterior place on your sits bones, draw your belly in and lengthen your spine. We were in an extended length of time through uh, Sphinx and Seal and then Winged Bird. So give your back body the side waists, all the muscles, an opportunity to warm and lengthen here in this seated pose. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. Take some nice, long, deep breaths in and out. Draw the shoulder blades towards one another on the back body, opening through the collarbones, opening through the heart. And as you deepen in, as the moments flow by, perhaps you begin to feel a little more space opening up through the groins. Maybe you lower the blocks. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe there's a little more available space through the groins. Perhaps you draw your heart forward, lengthening through the back body. Stay long through the back body. If you find yourself hunching over, come back up. It's important to lengthen the spine especially in these sweet, maybe slightly older bodies, maybe a little bit older than last year. <laughs> so lengthening the spine and drawing the ears back towards the back of the shoulders is beneficial. 
Notice your collarbones. Do your best to widen through the collarbones. Widening through the shoulders. And you know, you can move, stretching the neck. Finding what feels good in your body. Feeling good in your body. Breathe and enjoy your breath, the pose, this moment, this community of sweet beings. Staying with the breath. Perhaps there's a little more space. That's what time and breath and awareness might just open up a little more space inside, inside that inner physical body and inside the inner wisdom being that you are. Stay for a few more breath cycles. Let's say five. Five more breath cycles. Breathing in. Breathing out. to the space of the body. One more breath cycle. And if you've come forward, rise up. And for just a moment, as you remove your blocks and set them in front of you for our next pose, Take your hands to your knees, help them up. And we can bring our feet to a little wider and send the knees from side to side, nice and slow, windshield wiper. Feel those hips. Again, notice your shoulders. If you tend to hang in the shoulders, lift your heart. And we're going to come into dragonfly. You might help your legs. Big, wide, spread the legs, bringing the heels to the mat. Use your blanket well. Prop your hips, lengthen your spine, come to the anterior part of your sits bones, the part that's in the front. Turn your toes to the sky, bring those blocks right in, and hug the muscles to the bones in your legs. And you can just begin right here. Maybe, if you're anything like me, we're all human, so you're something like me, maybe you're feeling a stretch through the inner thighs, the adductors. Maybe this is enough, just being right here. Draw the belly in and lengthen through the back body. Relax the shoulders away from the ears and lift up. Lengthen through the back, lift the heart, and draw the shoulder blades towards one another on the back body. Good. Draw your ears back towards the back of the room. Open up through the collarbones. Hug those shoulder blades towards one another as those are, there's a pencil between them, and you want to hold that pencil right between the shoulder blades on the back body. Press the heels into the mat so you don't uh, overextend through the 
knee joints. Better to keep a micro bend in the knees than overextending through your joints. And breathe right here. And as those fibers begin to warm, you might feel a little bit of space opening up. Maybe you lengthen over the earth just a bit. You can lift the blocks to the high setting. Maybe rest your elbows on the blocks, keeping your spine long. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yes, it is. So much fun to practice together. We are together, you know. We are, have no doubt. <laughs> Lengthen the spine, draw the belly in, and smile. It's so good to smile. As you breathe here, perhaps a little more space opens up. Enjoy that space. Close your eyes for a moment and go within. Let your inner body let you know what it's feeling, what it's enjoying, what it would like, what it has to say. Even with your eyes closed, notice where your knees are and your toe tips and keep drawing them towards the ceiling so they're not rotating inward, but staying lifted towards the sky. Wherever you are, know that that is the perfect place to be. And breathe into the stretch. Perhaps it's becoming a little more intense like it is in my body. Ah, breathe into that stretch, that sensation of stretch. Also known as beneficial stress for the muscles and the fascia. All those connective tissues that enjoy opening up and releasing held energy that is available to us once it's released. Life force energy. Breathe and send the breath right to sensations. And you can even, with your inner voice, Communicate to those places and say something like, it's okay to let go. It's okay to let go. I love you. Thank you. Let go. Thank you. Maybe a little more space becomes available. Keep those toes lifted towards the sky. Breathe. Keep those heels pressing into the mat, into the earth, whatever it, the heels are pressing towards. That is gorgeous. I love that. Mm. You all look so beautiful. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Stay long through the spine, draw the belly in. We'll stay here for three more breaths. And then on your next inhalation, take it really slow. If you've come forward, begin to slowly come back up. And once you arrive vertically, take your hands behind your knees. And it's so important, sorry Stella, to bring the knees up slowly, bringing your feet to a nice wide place, way wider than hip width distance apart. Hands behind you, once again, lift out of your shoulders and with your breath, Windshield wiper your legs nice and slow. Loving those fibers. With your attention, just 
slow movements. Once you begin to feel the fibers returning to neutral, you can come onto your backs, moving the blanket out of the way. We'll come to the backs uh, in constructive rest pose. Feet on the mat, hip width distance apart. Once you've arrived, lift your hips, pressing into all four corners and then set of your feet, and then send your hips a little longer so your tailbone reaches down towards the foot of your mat. Then lift your head and lengthen the back of your neck. Settle into your back body. You deserve a few moments to really allow yourself to arrive on your back. If your back is arched and your lower back is lifting up off the mat, then again, lift your hips for a moment and send your tailbone a little bit longer. It's nice to lengthen through the lower back. We'll take figure four starting by crossing the right ankle over the left thigh. Flex the feet and on an inhalation, draw the legs towards you, both legs. You can hug in on your shin or your thigh of your left leg. And I know some of you like to practice with the left leg long towards the sky. It does look like a figure four that way. So let's all practice this way this morning. With the left leg extended towards the sky and the right bent at the knee, flex both feet Relax your shoulders, relax your face, keep the feet active, breathe. You can take your right elbow into your right thigh and press it out if that feels good. In your practice that increases the stretch. And if you're enjoying the stretch, breathe right into it. Send the breath into the outer hip flexors. That's where I feel it. And anywhere else you might feel that stretch or beneficial stress. If you notice your chin has begun to jut up towards the sky, Lengthen the back of your neck once again and relax your jaw. Do your best to relax the shoulders, the neck, the face as you breathe. And if it feels good as you practice, you can point your left foot and flex it slowly point and flex the left foot, pointing and flexing, activating the muscles and the bones through the feet. There's so many little bones in the feet, giving some foot love. And then Rotate the ankle, big round rotations. And go the other way. Mm, good work, yeah. And then you can bend the left knee, 
keeping the foot active, actively dorsiflexed, and lift it back up. And maybe one more of those. And lift it back up, flexing the foot. And then bending the knee. If it feels good, you can reach for your shin and hug in just a little bit more. Relaxing your shoulders, lengthening the back of your neck. Breathe into that hip. Let it go. Two more breaths here. And then please lower your foot to the mat. Uncross your legs. Take a couple of breaths before we'll take the other side. Just giving all that fascia an opportunity to just come back to neutral. Good, and then on your next breath in, cross your left leg over, flex the foot, and on your next inhalation, lift that right leg up, find the back of the thigh, so you'll bring your left hand through the hole between your legs, find both hands behind your right thigh, keep both feet flexed and active, and option to press your left elbow into your left thigh if that feels good. If you enjoy a deeper stretch or stress through the musculature and the fascia. Breathe into the stretch. Deep breaths in. Long breaths out. Letting go of all that held energy. And you know the big muscles of the hips hold a lot of energy or can hold a lot of energy. In other words, a lot of energy can get stuck there. So this is a wonderful opportunity to let some of that go. Notice your shoulders and release them if they tend to want to tense up. And release your neck, relax your neck and your jaw, your face. Keeping your feet active, staying with your breath. Let's begin to point and flex the right foot nice and slow, remembering that the feet are full of fascia too. Take it slow and mindful as you point and flex that right foot. And then we'll rotate the ankle, the right ankle. Slow, big rotations. Feeling into all those little bones and muscles as you rotate and then go the other direction. And then arriving back at stillness, let's lower the knee and extend the leg again. And another bending of the knee 
and lengthening the leg. And if it feels good in your practice, lower the leg back down. Maybe you hug in on the shin, maybe not. Keep both feet actively dorsiflex. Take a couple more breaths here. Keep the shoulders, neck, and jaw relaxed. Take a breath in and lower down. Unrele unrelease, release the pose, bringing both feet to the mat and take a few breaths right where you are. And then we'll take twisted roots from here, you could take a breath in and cross your right knee over your left. Heel toe your left foot to the left side of your mat. And on an inhalation, lift your hips to the left as well. Take your arms out into a T and lower your knees to the right. Here you may want to either fold a blanket to support your knees or maybe you use a block if one's nearby. Or maybe it feels good, unsupported. Whatever is the truth of the moment, be with that. Do your best to keep both shoulder blades resting on the mat. And if it feels good in your practice, turn your head to look towards your left fingertips. Mm, breathe into this beautiful side body stretch. Inviting the breath into the left armpit, the left lobe of the lung, the ribs, the side waist, and the hip. And then release that breath, slowly let it go. Maybe you feel the stretch through your psoas, your inner hip flexor. deep into the groin. As well as the outer hip flexor. Your IT band, your iliotibial band across the outer thigh. Stay with your breath. Soft shoulders, soft jaw, soft eyes. Long, deep breaths in. And longer breaths out. Two more cycles of breath here. And orienting towards movement, take a breath in and press your arms into the earth, draw the belly in and use the strength of your legs and your core to lift your knees back up. Uncross your legs, press into all four corners of both feet, and lift your hips back to neutral. We'll take the other side now. Cross your left knee over. 
Inhale to scoot your right foot to the right side of your mat and bring your hips to that side as well. And then let your knees lower down. Keeping your shoulder blades best you can on the mat. Use a prop under your knees if that feels beneficial. And if it's accessible in your practice, you can turn your head to look over towards your right fingertips. Mm, feel the expanse through your right side body. Welcome the breath into your right armpit, the right lobe of your lung and the ribs, the side waist, the hip. And as you release the breath, send it out your knees. Relax your shoulders, your neck and your jaw. Relax your face and your eyes. Enjoy the pose. Enjoy your breath. Enjoy this moment. Life is good. This moment is wonderful. This is the moment. This is the moment we are all in right now. There is no other, just this one. Mm, enjoy the breath. be here for a couple more breaths. And on your next inhalation, please press your arms into the earth, draw your belly in, and with the strength of your legs and your core, lift your knees back up. Uncross your legs and press into all four corners of your feet to lift your hips back to center. Take a breath in and draw your knees towards your chest, letting the thigh bones descend down on their own. No rush, no need to press, just allow. Lengthen the back of your neck. Soften your jaw. Take a few breaths here. Keep your feet actively dorsiflexed. Relax your shoulders. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, expand out into Shavasana. Lengthen your legs, send them out a little bit wider, as wide as your mat, letting your thighs turn out if that's the natural inclination in your body. Lengthen, lengthen your arms and draw your shoulder blades under your back. Check to see that you're evenly distributing your weight on your sacrum on your hips. Let your shoulders relax, your neck relax, your jaw relax. Cover yourself if that feels good. Stay warm.
once you've arrived in your final resting pose, take a deep breath in. Deep breath in. And as you exhale, send it down like a wave. All the way down. Letting it exit through the soles of your feet. And then take another deep breath in, just like that one. And as you exhale again, let that breath flow all the way down and out the soles of your feet. And then take a deep breath into the space between your legs. and let it go. And then take another deep breath into the space between your side bodies and your arms. Good, and then let that breath go. Then another breath into the space between your ears and your shoulders. And let that breath go. Begin to feel the bones of your body grow heavier and heavier and heavier. Sinking down into your mat, into the earth, letting go. begin to feel the muscles of your body as they open up and melt, releasing their form like balloons sinking down into the earth as well. And feeling the skin as it too releases form, melting through your mat into the earth. As your form becomes formless, it is received with loving arms by the earth below. Freeing yourself from form, find the infinite field of all possibilities.
And then beginning to visualize a beautiful, shining, glowing, golden light that draws closer and closer to you. Landing right in the space of your heart. shining brightly from within. Radiating through each and every cell of your body. Shining forth from your fingertips and your toe tips. And the crown of your head. Please bring one hand to your heart and the other to your belly. And notice the rise and the fall of your own heart and belly with each breath in and out it flows. beginning to feel into the vibrancy of your own body. You can wiggle your toe tips and your fingertips and rotate your wrists and ankles. Taking a deep breath in, lift your arms overhead, stretch your fingertips, point your toes, and exhale, let it go. And then take a breath in and roll to your right side. And there you lay, breathing in. Breathing out. Beautiful sunshine from within and without, shining forth from your heart and through your windows. Couple more breaths where you are. Drinking it all in, into the fabric of your being. And then with the strength of your hands and arms, lift up, come to your seat and bring your hands in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra. And may all beings know the flow of loving kindness. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Namaste. I know I left out the om. Shall we om? Let's om. 
take a deep breath in and we'll begin. Oh. 